Hi everyone, how are you going? I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, today is the 11th of 11th of November. It seems to be a special day uh, with the few in the world. Uh, but this day I remember my grandparents and my uncle's sacrifices uh, so that we may have the freedoms that we've had. Okay, the 100 year plan of Albert Pike in the late 1800s was given a series of visions by Lucifer which illustrated how he intended to establish his total reign in the world. By Christopher Watkins in his 1989 publication The New World, a historian A. Ralph Epperson documents very clearly the essence and aims of masonry. Drawing on the actual writings of members themselves with a 650 sor source reference, principally featured is the work of the 33 degree mace Freemason who was hailed as the genius Albert Pike, a grand high wizard whose volume Morals and Dogma is a definite version of the beliefs of initiated Freemasons and Illuminati. His writing confirms beyond a shadow of a doubt that the inner sanctum of his secret society worships none other than Lucifer himself, still parading as the angel of light and that the Masonic lodges are indeed, as Pope Pius insisted, the synagogue of Satan. According to other sources, Albert Pike in the late 1800s was given a series of visions by Lucifer which illustrated how he intended to establish his total reign in the world. This became a blueprint for the devil's human followers to implement. The rich, the powerful, those dedicated to eradicating God's name from the face of the earth. Remember, this was in the 19th century, a time when the first glimmerings of the atheist thoughts were emerging. Psychology and science coming to the fore, when Karl Marx in 1848 was publishing his founding document of communism, the political pamphlet Communist Manifesto, and when Darwin in 1859 produced the origin of the species. So it was in the midst of this augmenting climate of modern paganistic thinking that Albert Pike experienced his dynamic revelations. The absolute reign of Lucifer, Pike was shown, was to be inaugurated through three devastating world wars. The First World War was to cause people's faith in God to totter, to rearrange the borders of Europe and to bring down the Tsar of Holy Mother Russia, so causing communism to take root there, a model of humans, humanity's planetary future. Germany's post-world humiliation would consequently prepare the way for another global conflict. This Second World War was to further the interests of the communism, extending its borders to Eastern Europe and establishing the new state of Israel. Somehow, Israel's existence is strategic in complexity of coming events. By this time, too, the brothers, both Masons and Communists, would have begun their steady infiltration of the priesthood of the Catholic Church in order to dismantle this 2,000-year-old institution by decrees from within. About 70 years was to elapse before the Third World War would come about, unleashed by the world by decrees piecemeal, as Pope Francis described it. In the meantime, two generations would have been brainwashed with new worldly beliefs and Christian values gradually bred out of them. A cunning orchestrated attack would be launched on our four fronts. Firstly, an attack of the family unit, depraving parental responsibilities and making children subject to state control, introducing abortion availability and doing a dem demolition job on the tradition of marriage. Secondly, on the education system, eliminating all Christian teachings from classrooms and replacing it with social indoctrination based on secular humanism, along with atheist evolution and its theme of survival of the fittest. Thirdly, on private property, reducing accessibility through gradual erosion of the right to own your own quarter acre. Fourthly, upon nationalism, developing a new social ethos where the abolition of patriotism, countries and borders are encouraged. While all this is brewing and all manner of scandals were calculated to surface in the Christian churches to help destroy any remaining faith and through the growing strength of influential media, society would be inundated by New Age teachings and occult practices, human rights issues, political correctness and secular human beliefs of freedom from oppressive religious laws. The hidden powers behind governments who manipulate the affairs of humanity would then bring about the destabilization of the Middle East, leading to the destabilization of Europe and the Western world. Grand High Wizard Albert Pike boasted that Islam would be the central factor in the West's downfall. Islam will be the tool we'll use, my emphasis, to destroy the Christian West, he said. 
The outbreak of a high-tech nuclear war would then provide the platform and the throne for the reign of the evil one. In the process, according to Pike, Islam would be decimated along with the last threads of Christianity, and those who are left of the human race would be so weary of war and destruction that they would bow down to whom he, Holy Scripture, calls the great beast. A world in ruins with people in great need are easy to control, so the Masons will crown their deposed king and impose a Luciferian total terrorism on all humanity. In the aforementioned 1989 book, The New World Order, the author devotes a whole chapter to Lord Matria, the coming world leader, are already held at that stage in New Age circles and believed to have been born during the major alignments of the planets in the star sign Aquarius in 1962. Promoted nowadays on the Share International websites, Matriaro is acclaimed by his disciples as Ascended Master, or Christ the World Teacher, who is soon to be revealed in special, fast-approaching Day of Declaration, which will resemble Pentecost with instantaneous healings globally and impressive miracles. Matriaro's values of eco-spirituality, sharing resources and compassionate attention to the poor echo the social focus of Pope Francis. See, this is where the greatest deception will be. Most people imagine the coming Antichrist as another Hitler or Stalin, but his charismatic demeanour will be quite the opposite. Rather than evil, he will seem to be the saviour of mankind. For the followers of Islam, he will be perceived as the expected 12th Iman or Mahadi. For the Buddhists, the, Buddhist, the 5th Buddha. For the Hindus, Krishna. For the Jewish people, people he will be their long uh, it, be the long-awaited Messiah in many Christians Christ returned without the discernment required for true spiritual eyes the swindle will be so devilishly cunning that even the elect we have been warned will be deceived a further chapter of A. L. Rep. Epperson's book also exposes the secret destiny carved out for America by the early Masonic interests very evident with the Republic's inception on the 4th of July, 1776. An in-depth analysis of the Great Seal's occult symbolism is revealing, particularly in the Latin inscription, in et copius, Novotus Ordum Seclum, which translates as announcing the birth of the New World Order. I apologise for saying these words wrong. And certainly, the USA has played the leading role in the post-war period from 1945, spreading around the world its doctrine of liberty, democracy, and American might. It is also the home of the United Nations. In 1904, a Catholic priest, Father Robert Hugh Brenson, wrote a novel called Lord of the World, in which he foresaw our present times with an uncanny accuracy. A troubled world of terrorism, immorality, and apostasy gives rise to a powerful charismatic figure who the author calls the Lord of the World. He is the Antichrist, of course, but his name is Felsbum, uh, I can't say it, rather than Matria. However, the interesting touch in the story is that there is a Catholic priest who collaborates with Felsbum, I can't say that, sorry, and his name is Father Francis. It is fascinating in ret retrospect to see how heaven has in intervened in the past century as hell's diabolical pan has been unfolding. The year 1917, of course, is a pivotal moment when Virgin Mary appeared at Fatima, an obscure little village in Portugal named after the daughter of Islam's founding father, last prophet Muhammad. In the spring of 1916, the Blessed Mother was preceded by the angel of Portugal, later identified as Saint Michael, and it is he who prepared the young shepherd and shepherdess of Fatima for further divine visitation. This is an interesting detail because the book of Daniel chapter 12 describes the end time St. Michael is mentioning as being close to God's people. Once again at Garbondale in 1961 he appears on numerous occasions along with the Virgin Mary and this is the onset of Vatican II when the sec sealed secret of Fatima is silenced and the instructions of the Virgin Mary is ignored. It was at Fatima, 30 years before the advent of the nuclear weaponry, that Mary advised us that if people don't turn back to God, there will be an annihilation of several nations. Famous Russian author Alexandra Solhotskin, 50 years after the ruinous Soviet revolution, which swallowed up 60 million of his fellow countrymen, echoed the words of Mary as he repeated what he heard as a child. Men have forgotten God. That's why all of this has happened.
Reflecting upon the state of the world today, the lawlessness, the anarchy and the violence, the lack of respect for everything sacred, we could say the same thing. The only reason the New World Order and its worldwide worship of Lucifer will succeed is because humanity no longer wants Jesus Christ as their king. They have foolishly rejected him with the laws of God in favour of supposed liberty and they will reap a whirlwind. Hosea 8, 7 At Mejuri, the Blessed Mother told the visionaries back in the early 1980s that God had permitted the devil to have complete power to rule for a hundred years and we are living through that period. Her words reinforced the vision of Pope Leo in 1844 when he overheard a conversation between Satan and the Lord, a very similar scenario of the book of Job, where an agreement took place in the celestial throne room about Job's faith to be tested. After Pope Leo's vision, he was inspired to compose the well-known Catholic prayer to St. Michael for protection. That prayer and the Holy Rosary are the two major weapons needed in our arsenal for intensifying the final bat battle between good and evil. It's obvious now. From all I've been reading, the Masonry have been instrumental in directing this hundred-year strategy of decline, assisted by all the evil forces emptied out of hell during this period. According to the Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, this occurred two-thirds of the way through the 20th century. Those opposed to God have guided and controlled the course of world events and from the midnight 1800s have swayed the thinking of the masses. Today, especially through propaganda machine of the global media and technology advances in the communication, over decades, over the decades more and more of the population since the First World War have abandoned the land and been lured into the bludgeoning cities of the world by the promises of better prospects and all of us have been swept along the breathless pace, pace through the age, so much progress and scientific advancement, obviously our waiting destiny. In 1931, a devout young Polish nun, now St. Fush, I can't say that, sorry, was visited by Jesus and told to speak to the world about his great mercy and to prepare the world for my final coming, when he would come, not as a merciful saviour, but as a ju just judge. This visitation, along with the apparitions of Fatima, have been heaven's warning that, without prayer and submission to God, our future is extremely insecure. 13th of October 1917, the fiery dancing sun which plagued towards earth drove 70,000 people to their knees in holy fear. And this, the most monumental miracle since biblical times, was a reminder of our need of repentance. Feast of Blessed Francisco of Fatima. Footnotes, the New World Order available to read online. I'll leave the links in the description. So, School of Darkness, Bella Dodd first published in 1963. It tells Bella Dodd's story as a communist agent in America during the 1930s and 1940s, where one of her jobs was to encourage young rad radicals to enter the Roman church seminaries. After her defection to the Communist Party in 1949, she converted to the Catholic faith and was baptized by Fulton Sheen in 1952 and testified that I myself put 1100 men into the priesthood with the idea that these men be ordained and then climb the ladder of influence to become bishops and monasteries to weaken the church's effectiveness against communism. She explained that communism was perpetrated by finances to control the common man and advance world tyranny and warned that the church would soon undergo changes so drastic that you'll no longer recognize the Catholic Church. Alta Vendetta, the permanent instruction of Alta Vendetta, published in 1859, republished by Dennis Fahey in 1915. 50 as the Grand Orient Freemasonry Unmasked as a secret power behind communism. This Freemasonry doc document outlines the blueprints for the subversion of the Catholic Church produced by the highest lodge of the Italian Cabinary. It states that in a hundred years' time, bishops and priests will think that they are marching behind the banner of the keys of St. Peter, when in fact they will be following our flag. The reforms have been brought about in the name of obedience. This is now reprinted under the authorship of John Venari, 10 Books and Publishers, 1999. AA, 1025 Memories of an Anti-Apostle, Mary Care, also available. This is a personal diary discovered by a nurse in the 1960s which exposes the life of a communist who entered the priesthood with the intention to subvert and destroy the church. His code number was AA1025. In God's name, David Yellop, pu published by Jonathan Cape. There is a chapter in this investigated book, The 33 Days, covering a brief papacy of John Paul I.
revealing the Masonic presence in the Vatican during the 1970s. Several high-ranking cardinals were actually exposed in the Italian newspapers at the time. One in particular, Cardinal Jean Vollert, was a Secretary of State, the Holy See's equivalent as a Prime Minister, a position created to deal with diplomatic issues that had amused more power and influence since the Vatican II. It was during this period that Pope Paul made his famous remark that the smoke of Satan had entered the church. When Cardinal Villet died, there were papers found in his suit from the upper echelons of the Masonic Order congratulating him on all he had achieved during his term of office, and these papers were witnessed by Father Paul Kramer, who detailed them in his excellently researched, insightful book, The Devil's Final Battle. Cardinal Villet had been succeeded by fellow Masons, along with the Roman Cura, now exercising greater dominion than the Pontiff. When first elected, Benedict said of this administration body of parrots, Pray for me, I may not flee for the fear of the wolves. Both he and John Paul, for instance, have had their hands tied by the Secretary of State in a matter of specifically confiscating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Apparently, there are 20 cardinals currently in key positions within the Vatican who are Masons. These quite possibly are the ones who can be seen in well-aired pieces of video footage where they refuse to shake the hands with Benedict in his last days as Pope as he moves down the line of cardinals. A number of bishops and cardinals in the European states today openly admit their allegiance to masonry. See also the Pendo Institute website for the documentation of the Masonic infiltration. A video by the organization can also be seen here. In this prophetic message of Maria Divine Mercy, the Book of Truth, Volumes 1 to 4, from November 2010 to March 2015, both Mary and Jesus never referred to Islam's implication in gathering the storm of the Antichrist worldwide dominion. Jihadis have described them as devil terrorists, suggesting these barbaric individuals are instruments of demonic powers and in use of those orchestrating Lucifer's new world order. Islamic believers publicly refute the authenticity of jihadist religious affiliation, declaring they cannot be possibly by Muslims, or if they are, then they are not of the practicing one. Jihad means to do violence to one's self in the interest of growing in holiness. In other words, self-discipline, not committing violence against innocent people, which is apparently forbidden by the Quran, such as a crime is answerable on Judgment Day. C. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-12 Lord of the World by Robert Hugh Benson, first published in 1904, rep reprinted in 2012. Do you want a quick overview of the end times and read the great events? Pur purification will bring this fall. If you want all the details of the unfolding events, then go to Virtual Spiritual Retreat with Father Michael Rodriguez about the end times. Beware of the... It's the master plan of the Antichrist. Do not lend support to anyone who does not live in truth. That person will only lead you astray and upset all your assets to his own advantage. Children, follow the lead of my holy provision, which will always be embrace my commandments. My commandments present to you the truth, which is difficult to discover in these times. Do not lend support to anyone who does not live in the truth. That person will only lead you astray and upset all your assets to his own advantage. Beware of the New World Order. It is a master plan of the Antichrist. It paves the way for corruption of the mind and the spirit. It is not as it is portrayed. A unity of all people and all nations is based upon communism, which you must realize was an oppression of the people, even of the religious beliefs. Only a few leaders lead a good life, but they were the ones guilty of oppressing all of the others. Children, you were placed upon the earth during these times to face unique children, challenges. Do not succumb to those who lie to you. Support the truth, both in prayer and sacrifice. This is a step against the Antichrist. Read 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-15. The coming of the lawless one by the activity of Satan will be with all power and with pretend signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception, for those whom are to perish, because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, so that all may be condemned who did not believe in the truth, but had the pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you 
from the beginning to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and the belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us, either by the word of the mouth or by the letter. Communism is a political and economic ideology derived from Karl Marx that positions itself in opposition to liberal democracy and capitalism, advocating instead for classless system in which the means of production are owned communally and private property is non-existent or servantly curtailed. Keep my commandments. You are not saved simply because you never killed someone or stole from someone. You are saved by loving me more than the world and all its pleasures. Be positive in a negative world. It's prayers. It is your prayers which help me to change one heart at a time. Hearts that you may never see or know about in this lifetime. Jesus comes. He takes a diamond out of the wound in his side. He says, child, this jewel which is covered with the blood and the water of your Jesus, born incarnate, is the mission itself. Though many may challenge it, compete with it, and disbelieve in it, I will uphold it through the power and love.